Alina, Shannon, Brandon, good morning. I feel like uh, Miss Marianne from Rumper Room. Morning. Good morning, everybody. Brandon, how you been? All right, how are you? I'm good. good. What you got in your mug? Anything good? Uh, it is some tea that's steeping right now, some rooibos. Oh, very nice. How about you, Elena? What you got in your mug? Oh, definitely coffee and my second cup. So. <laughs> nice. Nice. I also have rooibos tea oh, in mine. Oh, look at you uh -huh. guys. That must be a cog <laughs> thing. Mm. Hey, Shannon, mm. what do you got in your mug? <laughs> I got an easy morning right there. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it can't be the classic. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and get started and hopefully more people will jump on. Was the email helpful, the reminder email that I sent out yesterday? Okay. I think that was nice. Okay, good. I will try to remember to do that. Um, don't always remember to do things that I'm supposed to do on time, but I'm give it my best shot. Uh, and thanks for being here. I love this um, platform that we can reach out to people that don't live here. And I think that's a real benefit to Zoom. Zoom meetings can get a little overwhelming. Hi, Lorraine. Hi. Um, but this one's kind of a short suite, but it's really a nice way to include COG into our meeting. So COG is Kalitswakaik um, Council of Governments. And my first time that I ever heard of them was Anissa and I was doing um, uh, flowers at the time and uh, you guys had a big, some big to do. And I got to do the centerpieces, which Ironically, were tulips, and um, and some, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of cog. So I've uh, gotten to jump in a little deeper into the pool, and now we're really deep into the pool. We're happy to have the chamber be a part of cog a little bit more than we have been in the, the last couple of years, because I think it's a really good partnership. And of course, when you blend Calitz and Wakayakum, you get a little powerhouse there. So. We get more resources to draw from and more people to reach. So I think that's a really happy thing. So um, because there's three of you, there's Hillary, who I haven't met. Hi, Hillary. And um, now is Mike going to jump on, do you think? Um, he had talked about joining. I also know that he was watching his granddaughter. So okay. it could have gotten, could have slipped. That's way more fun. We'll see. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that's way more fun. So I'm, I won't talk anymore. I'm going to turn the time over to Elena and Hillary to talk about what COG is to begin with for those that aren't familiar, and then talk about the Invest Local Networking Program, which I think has got huge potential. So, All right. Well, yes, I'll start. Um, my name is Elena Cangelosi, and yes, I am a community development planner for the Cowlitz Wakaikum Council of Governments. We are a regional planning agency that focuses on um, transportation and economic development are the two big things. Um, so yeah, I, I started here in uh, July and we also have Brandon Robinson on who he is also a, a community development, economic development planner with COG. Um, and he runs some programs as well for small businesses. Um, so the program that I wanted to talk to you about today that COG has been working on getting started in the region with the help of um, many local champions throughout the region is something called the Lower Columbia Investment Network. Um, and this is a local investing network uh, that will be region wide. So I don't know how much you all have heard about local investing networks, but we are um, the sixth local investment network to get started in the state. We've been working with the uh, Washington State University Extension as well as the Association of Washington Cities and the Washington State Microenterprise Association. Um, they have worked with other communities throughout the state to get these started. And um, the idea is to connect local businesses or entrepreneurs who are in need of capital for um, 
startup or improvements with local investors who want to see their money improve their own community. Um, and that is the bare bones of it. Um, and so we've started this network that is kind of housed administratively under COG. So we hold, we have um, applications for businesses who are interested. They can fill out the application, um, let us know what their idea is and what they're looking for in terms of investment. Um, and then we share that with our network of investors. So, and, and we, so we also have an application for investors who are interested in hearing about local investing opportunities. They can apply and get on our list um, and then we'll share those opportunities with them. That being said, this program is just getting off the ground. <laughs> so the network is not huge at the moment, but um, we have sent out our first uh, packet of, of applications to uh, the, of businesses that are looking for capital um, to our investing network. So we've had five or six businesses apply at this point. And um, yeah, slowly we're growing. Um, just started working with Stacy, who is amazing um, at getting this going more in uh, Wakaikum County. Um, and also Cecile Bamer over at Employ Wakaikum. She's been great. So that um, that's the basics of it. We've also partnered with the uh, Lower Columbia College, who's offering some uh, classes and workshops specifically for business owners. So right now, yeah, we're really just trying to build this like entrepreneur um, ecosystem in the region. And LCIN is one part of that, the Lower Columbia Investment Network. Um, I also have, yeah, Hillary Strobel is also on the call, um, who is the local champion for Longview. And she's been really essential in getting this going and building interest. So why don't I turn it over to Hillary to add to what I've said. Excellent. Oh, Elena, that was wonderful. Uh, the administrative piece of that, it's very important. You, you beautif beautifully said, um, and what a great partnership. So uh, I'll be real, um, uh, a little bit different, I think, in what I'm saying. So uh, hi, everybody, I'm Hillary. Uh, from the Longview City Council. And um, so I would just take the opportunity to also be um, as, because I'm gonna be speaking a little bit to what it means to be a community champion. So I am not an employee of COG in any way. I'm not mm -hmm. uh, officially a part of COG in any way. I am the Longview City Council member. Um, but what that means is that I get to, so I'm doing this strictly as a volunteer um, because I am a booster for my community and I love my community and because I think there's a huge amount of opportunity in my community. And so anybody taking on this role of local champion, um, be prepared. You're certainly welcome to invest in a business yourself, but that most of this work is cheerleading um, and, and, and it's volunteer. So that, that is something for people to keep in mind as they're kind of starting to build the ecosystem. What can you take on? Um, but the, the nice thing is that the benefit of my particular job position is that there's a certain amount of, of influence or um, connection that I have in the community. So um, part of what myself and Mike Karnofsky, who is on the Kelso City Council, who is the mm -hmm. Kelso champion, um, have been doing to help get this started is we tapped into our own networks um, and looked at who we thought investors could be. So we, the local champions, started to take that piece on um, in, a, in a pretty serious way. And by virtue of what we do and who our partners with, so we, we, you know, we partner with, for example, the uh, Economic Development Commission and through them and our downtowners groups and other kinds of civic groups like this, we're able to help identify the businesses. So Elena in her role um, with COG has been keeping track of all those businesses who is interested. So she mentioned a certain number of people who've already applied for investment. Uh, we've got lots, probably a, a couple dozen more who are like, this is really exciting. Um, and so they're kind of at that second tier ready to engage, you know, um, in the wings. 
And, and that's a lot of what Elena is keeping track of. And then um, Mike and myself and a couple of other champions in Kalama and Castle Rock um, are keeping track of those investors. So who is interested, who, um, you know, obviously you got to think about who's got um, a little bit of, of um, capital and, you know, who's got some civic mindedness. And I'm sure that there's people in your community that you can think of um, who have that. And, and then let me make an opportunity to say, this doesn't need to be somebody with gobs and gobs of money at all. Um, we do have a couple of folks in our community who would, you know, qualify as, as pretty wealthy. But what we have is a lot of folks who might have anywhere from a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand um, that, and they really, really care about their bodega on the corner, or they really, really care about um, helping their friend's son who's fresh out of high school, you know, put together his very first um, auto detailing shop. And, uh, but, you know, the, this kid's 18, so he doesn't have credit yet or whatever. And so, you know, that's somebody who can put a couple hundred dollars there and get their friend off the ground. So, uh, and we have talked to WSU Extension about what it might mean to have um, like investing circles. And so maybe there's five or six people who wanna pool their money and then they would act as one investor hmm. and, um, and just go ahead and, and um, that's another way to help generate the wealth in places where you might not necessarily expect it. That's a good so idea. somebody doesn't, yeah, so somebody doesn't have a ton of money. And, and this all got started by a, a woman that I really love and care about here in Longview, who said, well, what if I only had $50? Right. You know, she loves her community, but she doesn't have a ton of money. And so this is what we've come up with as a way to make um, this accessible to folks like her. Um, and, and truly then the other piece of what it means to be a local champion is just being as loud and vocal as possible about this. So uh, one of the things we did for April was we got all of the counties, uh, your county, my county, all of our city councils and town councils to declare this as economic, or I'm sorry, local, local invest local months. Right. <laughs> sorry. <Lynn. Whatever. laughs> invest local month for April. Um, and then part of that was spending all of our time, I get to do um, a council member report on a regular basis, for example, and that all goes on the public record. And I get to say, you know, um, this upcoming weekend in Longview is shop local uh, Saturday. And we do those on a regular basis and we're supporting our local businesses that way. And then we just get to amplify, amplify, amplify because that's investing too. When yeah. somebody just chooses to go to um, their local store, um, Elena, you and I have had this conversation and I'd love to give a plug for this. If you choose um, a credit union as opposed to a national chain bank, for example, those are all investments. You're making investments in your community. So this is easier than you think. Um, and it just takes maybe just one or two people really, really kind of getting excited about talking about it to get an investment network off the ground. Um, you know, and Elena mentioned that this is pretty new in our community. It's not new around Washington State, but new in our community. And um, we kind of had some grandiose ideas back in, you know, November, December about what we could make happen by January. And we've let go of some of those expectations of we needed to have XYZ done by this date, excuse me, um, but and let the conversation just um, be a little more casual. And then we have found like I said, these really great pockets of success. You know your community, so you know where, where um, somebody could be introduced to somebody else. Um, and then I just thought I might take the opportunity to clarify that a local investing network has no real like oversight over the investment. So we're not, um, we're not here to be any sort of, um, this is not regulated by the SEC or anything like that. We're a matchmaking service. So I happen that's to good, know of, that's a good frame. Yes, exactly. So yeah. exactly. So I happen to know that this business on our main street, Commerce Street in Longview, uh, would like to expand and they need some equipment. And then I happen to know, and they're a restaurant, and then I happen to know that this fella in the community is really, really into supporting restaurants because he's a foodie. So I'm going to introduce them to each other, wish them well, and then we'll try to check back in with them to see how that how that uh, matchmake went, but then our, we no longer are involved in that so that we're not having to regulate or anything like that. Um, 
I think that's a nice point to make uh, for businesses who don't want to get buried under lots more paperwork and stuff like that and investors who don't so necessarily. Gift. They're not so, claiming it as income. Um, is the investor claiming it as a donation on their tax? No, no, well, and it'll depend on the arrangement. So um, some people, it might just be, um, you know, if my next door neighbor's high school kid wants to set up a, you know, an auto detailing shop and they're my friend, I might consider that a gift. Right. But that's between me and them. And now that now that the match has been made, you know, that's, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Now I might have a uh, $10,000 and I might be interested in investing in a light manufacturing company that's putting together widgets. Mm -hmm. And I might want to have um, a five page contract that talks about my payout over the next five years as that company grows and produces more widgets. And that's just, that's going to be up to because, it, you know, that speaks to your role, if, if any of you choose to do this, or if we know of anybody who's interested in being a champion, is to know your community. Who, who is going to want a more structured investment? Which businesses are going to need something a little more flexible? And then, and then, you know, matchmakers have to know how to match the right, you know, the right people to the right people. Um, part of what, what I think goes a little bit awry with, like, say... I'm going to pick on Chase Bank because I don't like Chase Bank. But when Chase Bank sits down with somebody for a loan application, they're not really, they don't care. They're kind of like, well, you know, you've got a coffee shop. How many other coffee shops are in your neighborhood? That's too many. I don't think you're a good fit. See you later. Credit score is blah, blah, blah. Exactly. And, and that I think is a nice piece to Stacy to include that this then opens capital up to people who would traditionally be turned down elsewhere. So uh, we're, I'm not going to lie, a lot of women um, who are shut out of big, bigger banking for sure, um, uh, communities of color, uh, people who don't have great credit, either they're younger or they had to rebuild their credit after something bad happened. And I think we all <laughs> have, I certainly have had- 2020, that could be pretty much anybody, but yeah. Yes. So here's a perfect example of a prime time to do this. So um, you have an opportunity, I think, as you're building um, a network, you know, in Wakayakum County to to really know who's a good fit with who and, and how to make this really happen for your community. And it'll look in Wakayakum totally different than it looks everywhere else. And it'll look different than Cowlitz. And as much as I think we have a, a bunch to share, we are also very unique and, and oh, distinct. Yeah, actually the, the portion that I like that Elena and I were talking about a little bit is it doesn't always have to be a financial investment. Right. It could be an investment of your time. Like yes. I know one of our local community He's actually on our chamber board goes and volunteers his time to help one of our local businesses when she gets buried with work he goes over there and and helps her with her business it could be helping daisy chain during mother's day to say you know what i'll help you deliver flowers i won't charge you gas or whatever i'll just help you get the deliveries out and maybe maybe you gift me a flower arrangement or a plant or something for that so it could be a cool barter system as well yes or it could just be you take your business experience that you have or life experience and you share it with a new business or a, a business that's growing in a direction that you have experience with and say, been where you are at. Let me tell you, don't, these are the pitfalls. So be careful. And, um, and this is what worked for me. Um, so you're sharing, um, you know, advice, maybe, maybe you don't have a lot of money sitting around, but you've got a lot of experience. Um, or you have some time or you have an interest in that business because maybe they're your friend or they make the best coffee in the world or whatever and you want to help them you yes. know <laughs> sure I'll print your menus for you I'll go down to wherever and get them printed for you and that's my gift to you or whatever so um, I think I think just um, starting the conversation on how people can engage with each other and um, and be helpful is a, a really great place to start and we have I will say that of all the things that happened in the last year, it helped us to refocus on what our priorities are and how we can care for each other. I mean, our food bank is overflowing and we had, we had more volunteers than we had people that needed stuff. So, uh, <laughs> which is really a great problem to have. Yes. And I hope that that can continue as we start to get back on our feet. 
that we got to pause for just a minute and decide what was really, really important. And what we decided was each other was important. And we can't live without our small businesses. I mean, if we shut down here in Wakakum County, uh, we're toast. And it's kind of a hassle to go back and forth to Longview. My husband was stuck until about 11 o'clock last night because there was an accident on four just as he was trying to get home. So he had to turn around and go to a friend's house, which didn't break his heart too badly. But, you know, he didn't get home till 11 because the because Highway 4 was shut down. So, you know, living in Wakaikin County has its challenges and, and um, transportation is definitely one of them. So if we can help each other in the county, even if it's just, um, let me go help you unpack boxes as you move into your new office space, or let me help you, whatever. Um, I think that's a really great way to continue to give back without necessarily putting money on the line. Um, but, but I also know people that had stimulus money come to them. They're like, I'm not, I don't need it. I don't know what that's like, but um, I know that that <laughs> happened to some people and they donated it to some of our nonprofits. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. so that's a good example, I think, too, of investing into yes. to businesses or nonprofits that you feel are important to keep your community alive. So, yeah. Oh, Ari, this is Shannon. <laughs> um, I have a question about the, right now, this is a program that COG has kind of presented. Um, so is it that the loaning or the, who the business would be matched up to a champion would have to stay within the community itself. So for example, if, you know, this information gets out, out there and a business sees you know, that they have an opportunity, but maybe we don't have champions available yet. Are we, they would need to wait until we had champions within our own communities to have this work oh, or is it possible no. someone, okay. So, uh, Calitz could look at our opportunities yes. as well. Oh, absolutely. Jeez. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, um, People in, you know, Longview, uh, for better, for worse, just has a concentration of certain things. And there are definitely people here in sort of numbers who want to put their money out, re like they're, they're willing to cast kind of a big net. Um, certainly there are some people who are like, I'm only going to shop in Longview, but that's pretty rare as well. <laughs> so um yeah, and, and I think because there's a there's a tremendous benefit then in us working together, which was kind of the idea of having somebody from a different county come and talk to you. <laughs> um, and it just what's possible. And I think that our counties can be partners here. And we I know that there's people in Longview and Kelso who would love to see the opportunities in um, in Wakayakum for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also, are you seeing a good mix of champions where it's people that are, you know, like your example where, you know, maybe you just have $50, but you want to have a bunch of people put together to go towards something bigger, uh, as well as people that actually, that have, um, you know, higher amounts to donate towards a business as well. We do. So, um, I, I think I just want to be, uh, so the, the champions are the people who are just kind of helping to make the matches. Um, and then you've got, and what we're doing is we're matching the, the businesses to the investors. So the investors then are the, you know, they're, we're a little, so that's like sort of three different distinct groups of people um, just to take that chance to make sure I got that. Um, so yeah, and the investors, we're seeing people with all kinds of resources. So um I think it, it wouldn't be a good form of me to say, you know, exactly dollar amounts that we're talking about um, necessarily, because I, I know some of our investors are a little interested in kind of flying under the radar. You will find that mm -hmm. in your own community. They're not necessarily going to advertise because then they get asked for more money. <laughs> um, but we're, we're finding people, you know, with, you know, my, my friends with $50 who want to put together a club and together they'll have 500 all the way up to people with maybe several hundreds of thousands in spare cash. So it's, that's a nice problem to have um, and, and kind of everywhere in between. They're, they're also really, um, we're finding our people who would be good investors are really interested in a wide variety of sectors and industries. So we've got uh, one guy I mentioned who's just a, a foodie and he would really love to invest in restaurants and, um, 
and then food distribution. So he's gotten actually really interested in kind of going kind of a step up and looking at how we're making sure that the access to food is very there. Nice. Um, and then people who want to invest in real estate, people who want to invest in um, uh, any kind of brick and mortar as long as it's downtown. Um, and then we've got people willing to do kind of whatever. We also have people, because Stacy, you touched on this very um, beautifully, which is there are people who would love to see their investments go to philanthropic endeavors. And so we've got some people who are interested in doing stuff like that. Um, they want to make sure that it goes to a social business or, you know, right. some kind of thing like that. Or, and, and there's ways as this grows and we have the structure there to start turning this towards things like supporting um, uh, libraries or hospitals or, or schools or, or things like that, or whatever kind of philanthropic thing you can think of. So I, I hope that answered what you were asking, Shannon. Yes, no, that's perfect. And actually, as you kind of explain more, I, I have two, yesterday a person kind of approached us to talk about an idea they had and stuff. And I was excited about what their opportunity was and it's a smaller scale right now you know the opportunity where maybe they just need a little bit of help and you know this might be a good partnership to connect them with as they want to grow their business um, but then I also have another business in mind in our community that's probably looking for a bigger investor um, for something so you know I'm excited to get this video over to them and have them learn all about it when they're done so it's a great resource thank Excellent. you that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. So is there a date stamp on this? Um, I know the starting date, but is this an open-ended? Yes. And yeah. Okay. The idea yeah. is that this will be ongoing. A permanent. Um, Good. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, uh, people are going to start businesses next week and they'll probably start them next year too. <laughs> um, I, I'd love to see, I mean, there's so much opportunity in our region. Um, oh, by the way, I think this is probably a big, you know, of interest to Wakayakum, but I don't see why we can't be starting to use things like local investment networks to get um, more broadband access to the community. Um, and, and there are people, do we have, oh, Sharon says, who do we contact? That would be you, Elena, right? Yeah, okay. you can contact me. So I will put my um, email in the chat right now and then. Just yeah. send me an email. So I, I think there's a real opportunity when you're, so what we can be doing right now is laying the groundwork. We've got some really interested early adopters who are maybe willing to, they're, you know, take a, take a leap of faith and reach out to their community and start getting investments. And then um, that some of that infrastructure piece, things like broadband or fixing up highway four, so we don't have so many gosh darn accidents. Um, and that's a rough one. Um, and then this anyway, the and then driver. So yeah. Uh, I don't. <laughs> yeah. God. Okay. So, um, and then uh, all the way up to cr creating um, a co these communities that we see, you know, in our wildest dreams that people are gainfully employed. They're not just making, you know, making it. They're actually, they've got money. They're, you know, I like to say building local wealth. Um, and, and you can talk about well-being and you can talk about money wealth and, you know, and, and bringing that into our communities and making it so that people can work remotely, you know, mm -hmm. it speaks to every kind of economic development you can think of, mm -hmm. um, frankly, is to lay this kind of community level groundwork. So um, there, there's, I mean, honestly, we should be doing this like five or 10 or forever more years <laughs> into the future so that we can just keep keep creating more and more and more in our community. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, it's it's pretty, um, I think it's a fairly well-known fact that during recessions or downtimes in the economy is when most small businesses get started because people lose their regular jobs and then they go, well, maybe this is the time that I fulfill my dream of being a widget maker on my own instead of working for the big widget maker. So, um, <laughs> um, It'll be fun to see how we can help people get their small businesses started. And now that we have um, better internet and um, a growing internet company, right, Steve? Is he still there? Did I wake him up? 
um, we have more opportunity. I'm, here, I'm just trying to figure out how to unmute my stuff. So, I was just saying with better internet coming and a, a good solid internet company to support our local um, workforce, we'll have more people that can work from home as well or have a remote shop or, or business structure that doesn't necessarily have to be um, a downtown business. So that's really exciting. And there's a lot of people that want to get out of the bigger metro areas for a variety of reasons and move to Wakaikum County. The big holdup is getting them the resources that they need to do to do that. So yeah, cool. <laughs> so we are going to kind of do our big push in May. Um, I have an um, ad that'll be in the paper um, on ways that we can um, invest in our local community. But if you would all start the conversations in your little circles, that would be super helpful. And uh, we'll keep the conversation going here at the chamber, of course. Um, so Elena, if you wanted to come have a booth at Bald Eagle Days and talk about it, you so you could totally do that. Oh, um, totally. That would be kind yeah. of fun. Yes. Yeah, that would when, be great. When does that happen? That is July 17th. Okay. The Saturday. So come, we'll set you up a little spot and you can talk about we have some great examples here in Wakaikum County of local people investing in businesses that are now thriving and are anchors to our business. So it's been done, we've seen it, and it's a really cool thing to continue, so. Oh, yeah, this is often that. something that is already happening in the community. And of course, people are volunteering in, in Wakaikum County and helping each other already. Mm -hmm. So this is just a method to kind of um, get the word out to a broader audience when, when businesses are looking for some sort of investment, so. I yeah. like the term matchmaking. I think that's a really mm -hmm. appropriate way to put that. Does yeah. anybody else have any questions for Hillary or Elena? Okay, so if you wanna get involved on either end, you have a business and you want somebody to help you or you've got some extra scratch sitting around and you wanna help a business, then let's get a hold of Elena and let her know how we can, um, we can put those two ideas together. But while we're on the topic, Stacy, yeah, it doesn't hurt to remind people that the chamber actually has money to loan too. We do. We have small business loans that um, are available, and it um, you would come in and pick up an application and um, run it through the bank with the Bank of Pacific. So um, it has helped several businesses to get on their feet or to grow. Also, yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you know, Stacy, or does anybody know if uh, there's any kind of revolving loan fund or at sort of the city or county level that would do so something like what you just described that the chamber does? I don't know. Steve or Shannon, would you guys know? I, I don't believe so. I think uh, we get a lot of the referrals when people start asking around, you know, they are referred to us with our loan process that we have. That's an interesting idea, though, since they're sitting on some CARES money. You didn't hear that from me, but. Um. <laughs> well, it just so happens that something the COG does um, is help set up and administer revolving loan funds, which the city of Longview has one. And it's been quite successful for, I don't know, 30 years or 40 years or something like that. So mm -hmm. it might be something we want to bring up then to either county commissioners or the town council. I think the more opportunities that any community has to do loans for small businesses or even established businesses that want to expand farther um, is a great thing. So that's that'll be nice to pass off to our, our town council, like Stacy said. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's our clock. So thanks for jumping on. This has been recorded and we'll get it up on YouTube. Elena and Hillary, thanks so much for being here. We're going to have to get you some Wakaika mugs. So Next time you're here or one of us is there, we'll get it, we'll get it to you. And um, Hillary, where can we find you if we need to, to find you? Do you have, did you add your email or? I did you not, but to, I can, or? yes, I can add it in to the chat. And thank you for all your hours that you volunteer. I know being on a city council 
can be a huge task and Lonzi <laughs> certainly has plenty to talk about. So <laughs> yeah, this is a, this ends up being a real fun and busy week for me, but that's okay. <laughs> Elena, you're doing a great job helping us stay on task and getting information <laughs> out and being a great reflecting mirror to, um, to work together with COG. So thank you for all your work. Oh, Brandon, you're welcome. You're just sitting there quiet. What's going on over there? Oh, no, I'm just listening. He's just yeah. listening. He's just listening. No, Brandon's been great. And I found a data source for um, from COG um, that is really helpful because we're always looking for data. What's what's actually happening um, with num you know, with hard numbers. And uh, I just got plugged into what COG has for us as far as that. So I was nerdy and kind of excited to find that little resource that Bill sent over. So thank you guys for collecting numbers. I know Brandon, that's a big part of what you do is collect information and make it available for us to use. So happy to have you. All right, guys, anybody else questions? So we, we um, are kind of off schedule with this. Um, so we're gonna meet again next Wednesday and Keely is going to be our speaker next time, right Keely? I'm hoping so, Stacy. I got notified of a meeting this morning, but I'm going to see if I can just come late to it so I can still yeah. show up and give you guys some great information about our program. Yeah, she's got a really great program that she wants to share with us, and um, it, we need to put some feet underneath it and get it rolling. So um, we will see all of you next Wednesday. So we, we're not skipping. Miss Linda? Yes, I... Uh Probably all of you know the answer to this question. However, I was reading the newsletter that recently came out and I'm wondering what it costs to sponsor a flower pot and where does that money go? That is a really great question and it's a tiered sponsorship. And um, so it starts at $25 and it goes to $100 and I can call you later and give you that information. And the money goes towards buying the soil and the plants and the decorations that go into the pot. So um, it beautifies the downtown area. Do you guys have a pot out there by your business? No. Okay, so um, I will get with Donna um, is the one that's in charge of blooms. Um, and I know they bought some extra pots. So you get a tag that goes in the pot that says sponsored by, and it could be your names, it could be your business name, it could be in memorial to somebody, it could be, we love kike, and we can say anything you want on it. Okay. And then they're going to plant the pots um, this May 1st, so coming up soon. So um, uh, it's a really great way to beautify the community and get your name out there a little bit. And um, they, they pull the flowers out in the fall but then they decorate and we did gnomes this Christmas and some of them and little cute Christmas trees. And, you know, for Halloween, they had pumpkins and scarecrows. And so they stay seasonally decorated even if there aren't flowers in them, so. Okay. And um, yeah, if anybody wants to be a Blooms volunteer, they always need help getting those watered and taken care of during the summer, so. That would be a great thing to, we're still working on the best way to water those pots. <laughs> Right now it's a wagon full of buckets of water. So not ideal. Yeah. Not okay. Ideal. All right, guys. Well, thank you. And Linda, I will follow up with you and send you a Bloom's um, sponsorship uh, form on email. Anybody else? Lorraine's going to be a speaker in, in next month. And she's going to, she's going to help us out with some ideas for our offices and uh, it'll be great. All right, guys, have a super great day and we will catch up soon. Thank you. Thanks Thank so much you. for being Thank here. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thanks for having us. Go finish your coffee. <laughs>